As the climate warmed and the ice receded, Europe underwent significant changes, leading to the formation of the landscape we recognize today. In the Neolithic period, also known as the New Stone Age, which began around 10,000 BC, people began to establish more permanent settlements, selecting locations based on favorable qualities like access to water sources. They transitioned from a nomadic lifestyle of hunting and gathering to one of agriculture and animal domestication, leads to new artistic expressions and cultural transformations that still impact our world today. At the dawn of history, humans emerged from caves to create their greatest invention, the advent of cities. My name is Lucas Lima, architect and professor of art history. Welcome to my channel. The earliest evidence of these changes can be found in the fertile regions of the eastern Mediterranean and Mesopotamia, specifically between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. One notable settlement emerged in the 9th millennium BCE at Jericho, located in the present-day West Bank territory near the Jordan River. The inhabitants of Jericho built houses using sun-baked mud bricks on stone foundations. They plastered the floors and constructed roofs with branches and earth. Interestingly, they buried their dead beneath the floors, but separately displayed the skulls above ground. These skulls were reconstructed with tinted plaster to resemble flesh, and seashell fragments were used to create the eyes. The craftsmanship and attention to detail in these reconstructions give them a remarkably lifelike appearance. These funerary practices may indicate a belief in an afterlife or a reverence for the deceased, possibly involving ancestor worship. Around 7,500 BCE, the population of Jericho exceeded 2,000 people. To protect their settlement, they dug a wide ditch and constructed a massive stone wall around the town, which spanned approximately 10 acres. The wall, built with simple stone tools, was 5 feet thick and over 13 feet high. Within the wall, a circular tower measuring 28 feet tall and 33 feet in diameter was incorporated, possibly one of several. This monumental architecture, constructed with basic tools and materials, marked the birth of large-scale construction projects in human history. The purpose of the wall may have been defensive, serving as a fortification against neighboring settlements or protection against floodwaters. This development demonstrates the ability of Neolithic societies to organize and carry out complex construction projects. Moving to Ain Ghazal, near Amman in Jordan, we encounter a distinct sculptural tradition from the mid-7th millennium BCE. Over 30 fragmentary plaster figures were discovered at this site, some of which are bus size, while the tallest restored statues reach a height of 3 feet. These figures represent the earliest known large-scale sculptures. Conservators studying these sculptures have found that plaster was applied to bundles of fresh reeds bound with cordage. The figures were constructed horizontally and the legs were added separately. Paint and cowrie shells were used to add details like eyes with the shells darkened using bitumen. Once the plaster dried, the fragile figures were stood upright and likely adorned with wigs and clothing. The purpose of these figures is not fully understood, but they may have represented ancestors or had a mythical function, as some of the bodies depicted two heads. In Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, the excavation of Satal Huyuk since 1961 has revealed a Neolithic town dating back to around 7,500 BCE. Flourishing through trade, particularly in obsidian, a highly valued volcanic stone used for making sharp blades, the town went through multiple building phases over several centuries. Notably, Satal Huyuk lacked streets, and the mud brick and timber houses had no ground level doors. Instead, each house stood adjacent to the next, accessed by ladders through holes in the roofs, which also served as smoke vents. 
This architectural design provided structural support and defense, as attackers would need to scale the outer walls before encountering resistance on the rooftops. The design also optimized the use of building stone and provided insulation. The interior rooms accommodated various activities, and burials took place beneath the floors. The walls of many rooms at Satal Huyuk were covered with plaster, often painted. The paintings depicted scenes of animal hunts, with small human figures running alongside disproportionately large bulls or stags. Unlike the dynamic cave paintings of earlier periods, these images had a static quality. One notable painting in an early room appears to depict rows of irregular block-like houses, possibly representing Satal Huyuk itself. Above the town, a bright red feature with black spots and topped with black lines and dots may represent Hassan Dag, a twin-peaked volcano visible from the settlement. If the identification of this site is correct, this painting is the earliest known example of landscape painting. It suggests a sense of community and an identification of the inhabitants with their surroundings. Some archaeologists speculate that the more elaborate rooms at Satal Huyuk served as shrines. Bull's horns and plaster breasts found in these rooms may have symbolized fertility, suggesting the presence of ritual practices. However, the exact purpose and meaning of these rooms and their decorations are still subject to interpretation. During the Neolithic period, various new technologies emerged, indicating the beginnings of specialization within communities. With the assurance of a regular food supply, certain individuals could focus on developing specific skills. One significant development was the creation of pottery. Oven-fired pottery, known for its durability, has been found in regions such as Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Anatolia. The technology of pottery making spread to Europe as well, appearing around 3500 BCE. Clay vessels painted with abstract forms were prevalent during this period. These vessels, found in regions ranging from Mesopotamia to Anatolia, showcased a variety of abstract designs. In addition to pottery, clay was also used to create figurines. For example, at Cernavoda in Romania, figurines of a woman and a man dating to approximately 3500 BCE were discovered. These figurines exhibit high levels of abstraction, with linear forms and sharp edges. The three-dimensionality of the figurines encouraged viewers to examine them from various angles, possibly indicating an appreciation for their sculptural qualities. Found in a tomb, the figurines may have represented the deceased or mourners, or they could have served a different purpose before being buried. As the Neolithic period progressed, new artistic expressions and cultural practices emerged, transforming human societies. From the construction of monumental architecture to the creation of pottery and figurines, the art of this era provides valuable insights into the lives and beliefs of our ancient ancestors. Continue on our journey through time as we unravel the captivating story of art history in the Neolithic period, where the seeds of human creativity were first sown. I hope you enjoyed discovering the origins of this awe-inspiring history with us. Don't miss a single brushstroke of our epic tale. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to know about our next adventure. Continue with us in the upcoming episodes as we explore even more fascinating chapters in the world of art.